on this first Sunday of Christmas 2020. We're delighted that you're with us today to worship, and I invite you to go to our website, gracesilome.org. Scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a button there for our uh, worship bulletin um, for today. You can also follow along in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 355. We'll take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts for worship.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, for my whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations sh shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, 
established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his commands to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives no like wool. He scatters He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his words to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not sent them so to any other to them he has not revealed his judgments. Alleluia. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son born of a woman born under the law in order to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in, in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He comes after me, ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On this first Sunday of Christmas, we hear the Christmas story in soaring verse with mystical sight to the time before time, when there was only God, hearkening back to the opening verses of the Hebrew scriptures in the beginning. John begins the Christmas story earlier than Matthew or Mark or Luke. He reminds us that Christmas really begins where Genesis begins in the beginning with God in creation. So John begins by talking about the word of God. Now the word here is God in action, God creating, God revealing himself, the one whom the church has named the second person of the Trinity, the son, the eternal word, or in Greek, the logos. This word was with God and this word was God, and this word is the Christ. Then John tells the Christmas story in nine words, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He who was with God in creation, the one who is God revealing himself to the world, this one became a person, became flesh, as completely human as you and I. Not God in a people suit, not a really good person whom God rewarded and made special, not a super angel God created early and saved up for Bethlehem, but a person, a human being, who was the word, who was God's own self. Soaring words, but it's still the Christmas story, still the story of Matthew and Luke, the story of the birth of Jesus. In addition to telling the same story, the gospel writers also share one special way of telling it. You see it in our collect today. 
There is one image, one symbol, that they all use to talk about the birth of Jesus. They all talk about light. The light of the star, the light that shone round the shepherds, the true light that enlightens every person. These all echo Isaiah's vision of vindication, shining out like the dawn, of salvation like a burning torch. Where Christ is, the prophets and gospel writers talk about light. The light shines in the darkness, John proclaims. And somehow we understand, we too see the light revealed in Jesus, the light of truth, the light of grace. In large part, I suspect we understand this because we know about darkness. We know what it's like to live in and with darkness. Especially in this time of pandemic darkness, we know what it's like to try to walk through unfamiliar territory that no one has been through before. We know about the darkness of illness and disease and depression and fear and loss of income. But we also know what it's like to live in the light. What John says about Christmas is that a new light begins to shine, gradually, quietly, but with absolute certainty. And by that light, we can begin to see. Even now, with the news of vaccines being rolled out, we see a glimmer of hope for the end of this darkness. By the light revealed in Jesus, we can begin to see who we are and who we are created to be. For it is in the person of Jesus that what it means to be fully human is finally being made clear. In him we see that our lives are made whole only as we surrender in love and service to God and each other. In him we see that really being alive means risking everything for the love of God. In him, we see that hope needs never be abandoned and that God has placed within each of us possibilities beyond our imagining. By that light, we begin to see God clearly for the first time. No one has ever seen God, John reminds us, but God is made known to us in Jesus. This means that everything we ever thought about God and Everything we thought we had figured out about God, and everything that we were sure we knew about God, all of this is now made evident in Jesus. Who God is, is fully revealed in Jesus. Not in one saying or one parable or one miracle or one act, but in all of Jesus. In his birth, his life, his ministry, his teaching, his death and his resurrection. All together, we finally have the light we need to see who God really is. The light of Christ, the Word made flesh, comes among us at Christmas, and we celebrate its coming into the world. God reveals God's self and God's love for us in Christ. That first Christmas, the light shone, and it continues to shine through us. By that light, we have been given the power to become children of God and to find our place in God's family. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is the Christmas story. This is our story. Brian Wren has written a hymn not found in our hymnal that brings John's Christmas story down to earth. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the birthing, the milk and the breast. Good is the feeding, caressing and rest. Good is the body for knowing the world. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the body for knowing the world, sensing the sunlight, the tug of the ground, feeling, perceiving within and around. Good is the body from cradle to grave. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the body from cradle to grave, growing and aging, arousing, impaired. 
happy in clothing or lovingly bare. Good is the pleasure of God in our flesh. Good is the flesh that the word has become. Good is the pleasure of God in our flesh, longing in all as in Jesus to dwell, glad of embracing and tasting and smell. Good is the body for good and for God. Good is the flesh that the word has become. May this Christmas season be filled with the light of Christ, and may you experience he who is the word being made flesh in you. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In Christ. God's word has become flesh dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Let us pray to the true light, which enlightens the world, that from the fullness of God, all creation may receive grace on grace, saying, what has come into being in Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people. Gracious God, Clothe your church with the garments of salvation and cover her with robes of righteousness, that we may be your witness to testify to the light. What has come into being in Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people. Inspire the leaders of our nation and all in authority in the ways of grace and truth, that we may no longer be a people enslaved under the law, but may know ourselves to be heirs adopted as God's children. What has come into being in Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people. Be our light in the darkness for all the world, that the fullness of your heart may be made known for the healing of the earth. What has come into being in Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people. Live among us a word made flesh and reconcile this community to your light. What has come into being in Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people. May your people be a crown of beauty and a royal diadem in your hand as we pray in faith for Poppy, Adam, Aidan and family, Allison, Austin and Winnie, John's family, Lee, Ken and family, Steve's family, Pam's family and Bill, G, Kathleen, our Grace Church family, Pam and John, Harmony, Art, Kelly and family, Jewel, Kyle, Trey and family, Jack and family, 
Sharon's family, Maddox, Bruce, Nancy, Norm, Matt and Sandy, Benny's family, Bob and family, Harold and family, Donna, Dawn, Pam, Bud, Patty Lou's family. For the air, water, land, plants, animals, and people suffering from natural disasters around the globe. For those suffering from violence at the hands of others. For the healthcare system and all those serving their communities. For students, teachers, parents, professors, and staff at schools, colleges, and at home during the pandemic for all of those suffering from the coronavirus, for the people and work of Genesis House, Mana Center, Northwest Arkansas Children's Shelter, Episcopal Relief and Development, Meals on Wheels, Earth Mission, Canopy Northwest Arkansas, the Garden of Asylum Springs, Little Free Pantry, Grace Food Pantry, and for those we now name silently or aloud. Hear our gratitude for your glory manifest among us, especially for the birthdays this week of Caroline, Matt, David, Stacy, Lindy, Duncan, and Emily, and for the anniversaries of Matt and Amanda and Mike and Kathy, and for those we now name silently or loud. Receive those who have died as heirs of eternal life, especially the victims of COVID-19 and those we now name silently or aloud. What has come into being in Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people. Loving and gracious creator, from the beginning you have brightened our darkness with the light of your life. Let your vindication shine out like the dawn and your salvation like a burning torch that your word made flesh may bring grace upon grace to all the earth in the power of your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Welcome again to Grace Episcopal Church in Salem Springs, Arkansas on this first Sunday of Christmas and Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. As most of us know, Christmas is not just a day, but it's a season, the 12 days of Christmas. So we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus throughout these 12 days. Uh, today, uh, immediately following the postlude, we'll have a time for you to be able to greet one another, to share Christmas greetings uh, right here on our uh, Zoom uh, worship. Um, so stick around after the postlude and you can unmute yourselves after the music ends uh, and greet one another. 
I hope each and every one of you had a wonderful uh, and merry, happy Christmas uh, with those that you were able to spend time with, either in person or virtually. Um, and I pray that the rest of this Christmas season may continue to bring light and peace into your lives and the lives of those that you touch with your love and with your light. May our wondrous God, who has adopted us as children and heirs of divine life, fill you with God's light. May Christ, the Word, become flesh, fill you with the life which is the light of all people. May the Spirit whom God has sent into your hearts fill you with grace upon grace. And the blessing of our glorious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and dwell in you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.